The Secrets of Stargate is brought to you by the StarQuest Production Network and is made possible by our many generous patrons. If you'd like to support the podcast, please visit sqpn.com slash give. You're listening to The Secrets of Stargate, Episode 20. Janet West, Jackson has identified the seventh symbol. All right, here we go. We are about to try to make a connection. All we gotta do is bust out of here, commandeer the ship, and fly on home. Indeed. You say that a lot. I know that this could be dangerous. But this is our job, right? It's what we signed on to do. It was never about going home. It's about getting us to where we're going. Hi, I'm Jack Barazzini, and you're listening to The Secrets of Stargate, where we talk about the hidden meanings and deeper layers found in the Stargate movies, TV series, and more. And joining me today are Father Corey Stika. Hi, Father. How's it going, Jack? Going well. And Lisa Jones. Hi, Lisa. Hey, Jack. And Victor Lambs. Hey, Victor. Hi, Jack. Today, we are discussing the 20th episode of the first season of SG-1, There But for the Grace of God. Father Corey, did you want to give us a brief rundown of this episode? Sure can. On P3R233, SG-1 finds an alien warehouse full of artifacts, which immediately grabs Daniel's attention, as you would expect. Tilk finds a warning sign from other Jaffa that the world has been bombed and irradiated, so Jack orders to return to Earth. However, Daniel, of course, is too busy checking out the collection and legs behind. He touches a strange mirror and thinks that the rest of SG-1 left without him, so he returns to a Stargate command both similar and different and Earth is under invasion by the Gwauld. General, not Colonel, O'Neill. Colonel, not General, Hammond. And the rest of the SGC staff don't recognize him because Daniel didn't accept Catherine Langford's invitation to join the Stargate program. Once Doctor, not Captain, Carter shows up, they realize that Daniel has actually passed through the mirror to an alternate universe that is actually some time ahead of Daniel's universe. Oh, and Tilk's not there because he's still Apophis' first prime, and he's the one that's responsible for the invasion of Earth. Eventually, Daniel is able to convince General O'Neill to send him back to P3R233, and Daniel is able to go through the strange mirror back to his own universe to find SG-1 searching for him and warn them of the impending evasion on their universe. Nice. Fun times. That's very good. I had a slightly <laughs> shorter one. Uh, the ghoul attack Earth and everyone dies at the end. Yep. <laughs> well, I forgot to mention that an SGC is blown up. The self-destruct is actually allowed to complete. Yeah. <laughs> Crisis on Earth, too. Yeah, <laughs> yeah they really uh, put a final ending on that alternate timeline there. So I don't know if that's something we're going to be seeing again in the future. Mm, probably Earth not. 3. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so uh, what do you think of this episode, uh, Father Corey? Well, this is, this is a great episode. And of course, this is uh, getting ready to the end of the season. We've only got an episode left till the end of the season. So we're, you know, it's kind of wrapping things up. Uh, one thing that struck me, and I, I don't know why I never got this parallel until this week when I was watching this episode, is it's very similar to a Doctor Who serial from 1970, the, uh, ser- the third Doctor, uh, John Pertwee serial, Inferno. In mm. that one, they're, the doctor is actually at this project where they're drilling to the core of the earth. They're drilling through the crust to the mantle of the earth. And the doctor's tinkering with his TARDIS console and gets shipped off to an alternate universe. Uh, same kind of thing applies. It's ahead of Prime Universe, the doctor's universe. And they actually do end up drilling through the, the crust of the earth, which causes the earth to basically explode. The Doctor, however, is able to get out of the universe back to his universe and warn them and stop the project in time. So very similar plot line. You know, of course, how it works out is a little bit different. It's an alien invasion versus, you know, a project drilling. But it's the same idea of going to an alternate universe and uh, that universe is ahead. So he's able to go and warn the prime universe. So I I really this is an episode I really enjoyed. I've always enjoyed. And of course, it wraps up really, really well over the next episode two once we get the to be continued yep mm-hmm. but nobody in this universe wears an eye patch or has a goatee nope nope no nope. no no evil evil unit or anybody like that no <laughs> <laughs> yeah no what about uh, you victor what are your thoughts um yeah this is another uh one of my favorite episodes um i i do have to say though that watching it once you know kind of what's going on it is kind of unbearable because they do dance around the 
and they refer to it alternately as alternate universes, alternate dimensions, parallel realities. They can't really, they kind of have all the bases covered there. But I really do, I really do like this episode um, a lot. And, you know, it, it's, it's something you see in a lot of science fiction. Star Trek's done it. You know, DC Comics has done it. Um, I think pretty much everything covers it off at, at, at some point. But uh, no, I really liked it. And I have to say it was really refreshing to see a uh, military unit that evacuates the civilians first before they pull the military <laughs> and also blows up oh. all their weapons before they leave. It was just so refreshing Stamp to see that. canceled. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what a timely comment. Yeah. yeah, I don't know if it will be in five weeks. We'll see. <laughs> we'll be on something else. What about you, Lisa? Oh, this is I agree, with, I agree with what Father Corey and Victor. This is a fun episode. It's it's kind of neat. The first alternate reality, alternate universe, alternate dimension, whatever you're gonna call it, right? Mm -hmm. It's the first time we get to see it in Stargate, I think. Right, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. uh, it was just a lot of fun. The, the they changed it just enough. But, but left the core of the characters the same. And we can talk a little bit more about how um, General O'Neill was more like the movie O'Neill versus you know, mm -hmm. more like O'Neill with mm -hmm. one L versus two L's. Mm -hmm. But uh, they, they changed it slightly, but still left it intact. So it was two thumbs up for me. <laughs> yeah, I really enjoyed it too. Um, I like that they didn't go full-blown kind of mirror universe thing where everyone was like some sort of evil psychopath. They yeah. got their, their personalities the same, but they rearranged it just enough. The circumstances were different. I thought that was an interesting way to play that. Like, you get a, you, you basically get, you see the same characters, but you see them under a huge amount of stress. Mm -hmm. Right. So, uh, and it gives you that little twist of what if, right? Kind of like right. the title of the episode, right there, but for the grace of God. So a couple of things change, and then what happened? And uh, Elizabeth Hoffman as uh, Dr. Langford in this is is awesome. She's good in all of her appearances, mm -hmm. but just the way she's leading the Stargate program now um, and uh, is, is basically the voice of Daniel uh, for the SGC, but also kind of that uh, General Hammond uh, in there a little bit, too. Is, is She really comes into her own as a character in this, and I like that a lot. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. What I would what I was most interested in was how did. Hammond end up being a colonel and Jack end up being a general. Like whatever, whatever yes. uh, actions were precipitated to cause that were obviously further down the line than uh, Daniel mm -hmm. saying no to becoming part of the project because General Hammond's career must have changed uh, dramatically. Well, he was yeah he he was two ranks down. He was a two star general or is a two star general, but in the mirror universe or the alternate universe is a, a colonel, which is below one star general. So that that was there's you know and I think we're going to get to an episode next season that might help explain that 1969 Ah, I didn't make Oh yeah. Yeah. Flash forward I was gonna say to uh, why General Hammond became General Hammond instead of Colonel Hammond. That's true. Ah, I was going to say tailhook that. but that's that's a much better explanation. <laughs> <laughs> I think Jack's too young to to remember that. Remember that. <laughs> but, yeah. Don't yeah. Google it. <laughs> I'll just leave that one a mystery for me. Yeah. <laughs> but no, uh, excellent. Uh, you know, this is he didn't write the episode, but Robert C. Cooper, um, you know, wrote the teleplay for this. And I think he did a pretty good job. Like I said, there's some stumbling over whether to call them alternate realities universes. There's some other um, writing gaps and stuff. But um just on that note, before I forget, I did want to mention that Jimmy Aiken's Mysterious World has done a very, uh, very good episode on uh, multiple universes and the parallel universes thing. Mm -hmm. So um, you can look on SQPN for that. It's it's definitely uh, one of the best episodes. That just makes me wonder who is hosting this podcast in the Ultimate Universe. <laughs> That's a really good ah. question. <laughs> well, right now, if if, that, if this was the alternate universe, we would all be uh, nuked. So true. Oh yeah, <laughs> you're right. I have to go back and look as at my much map. as I want to. Yeah, as much as I want to think they'd give Detroit a pass because we've been through enough already. I don't think they they would. I mean, they they leave us a, a fine out here in Montana. You know, there's yeah. nothing out here to nuke, yeah. so we'd be fine. But I don't know about the rest of you guys that live in cities. Yeah, I'm pretty sure Houston is is high on the list. 
think that's what we yeah. had to support so. NASA and everything else. Energy. Mm. Yep. I like uh, the threads they set up in this episode of the mysterious signal from deep in space that points to wherever the uh, Gualds come from originally. So. Yeah. And well, they say that signal was from the aliens on P3R 233, mm -hmm. who we never meet. I don't think, mm -hmm. you know, they're, they're not the ancients because they were around up until three months ago and the ghoul wiped them out and put up a scary face on their, was in their that, warehouse. Was that three months ago? The way, and I could be misunderstanding it, but I, my understanding was that they had destroyed that civilization long ago and it had just taken that amount of time for that. Yeah. To get it was. It was the signal was sent was oh. at light speed, you know, at regular radio wave speed, and they just got That's it right. three months oh, ago. Okay. okay, I gotta turn in my nerd card. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I, I like uh, that that kind of reference. Although, um, you mentioning that we never actually see the aliens, Victor, that makes me think of the original V miniseries from the eighties. I love uh, that. They mm. set up the final part of that with, like, we're going to send a signal into space and find whoever has already battled these aliens, and then they never pay that off. So if you're going to set mm. up something like that, you really need to kind of need to pay that off. The check off I can head cannon it. Signal. Yeah. Yeah. I can head cannon it and say maybe it was the furlings, but. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly what it was. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. So, um, Lisa, this is a big episode for uh, the show. <laughs> It is. It yep. is. And, and you'll find they're very consistent in alternate realities with their uh, putting Jack and Sam together. So this, mm -hmm. is, this, this episode spawns a whole lot of excitement in the ship world. Yeah, <laughs> it does exactly. <laughs> Until well, we, get, uh, we get point of, up, uh, point of view next, next season. And that just takes it a whole nother level, right? <laughs> nice. I, I like, uh, I like uh, Catherine's line, but I guess they're not... I guess they're not engaged in your universe. Yeah. 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 And they're very nonchalant about it. Right. And Daniel's like, Oh mm, no. The way that scene was filmed. I wonder like, did they not want to like kiss each other? Cause it's like shot, like really out of focus in the background. They hug each mm -hmm. other, mm -hmm. but it's, I, I wonder if there was something like that going on. I don't know. I think it was like, you don't want to give, give too much. Right? right. Cause, because trust me, there's a lot of holding out and you'll all the times they put them together. You have to wait a long time to get a kiss. <laughs> so I, I think it was like you give them a little bit, but don't give them too much. Yeah. I will say I was a little disappointed with Carter's. Yeah, she, I just felt like she was a little softened up. Well, until she pulls the grenade, of course. But yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I love Catherine Langford, but the one that, that they, they brought in that she was the one that figured out the gate. And made it all work. And there's Sam being a doctor of astrophysics and not military. And it's like, okay, well, what was she doing? Mm -hmm. You know, I just, yeah. I don't know. I kind of felt like her character deserved that triumph at this point because she was with that program for so long and everything she's been through with it. True. It was nice to see her get that, at least in one version of reality. And it was a nice tie back into the movie, yeah, right? Of, of making a choice. Yeah. And uh, another character we get to see uh, very uh, snazzily dressed is, is Walter. Yep. <laughs> yeah. and, and I think, is this the episode where Donis Davies says Araman and it comes out Harriman and he gets his name? Because I listened to it like three times and when he says Araman and he's not dressed up as an Araman, he's dressed up as a civilian and it comes out Harriman. Mm. And yeah, he's credited as Sergeant Walter Harriman, but that just could be because of, uh, he's referred to that later on. But that is... Uh, apocryphally how the character got his name is that Don S. Davis said uh, Airman and it sounded like Harriman and that kind of hmm. stuff. Oh, it could be. Yeah, he wasn't in uniform. He was just like in oh, suit. shirt and tie. And, yeah. yeah. But he did get to shoot a gun. That's true. He yeah. was pretty good with oh, it too. Yeah. yeah. Till he got shot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I liked how they really pulled no punches with that in this episode. Like and they just they killed everybody. Yeah. yeah, they just killed yeah. everybody. And with Teal, who was the he's still the first prime, he's leading the invasion. And the whole thing is Jack is gonna go and show him the footage of them from the prime timeline of Stargate, where he's on the team. And they kinda they kind of flip that because you you think that it's gonna get to him and he's gonna show that he's really good inside, and then he 
just shoots him. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I like that they did not. I like that they kind of. What was the thing that Star Wars fans are upset about? They subverted expectations with that. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Of course, it also it doesn't help about sending the bomb through to Chulak, right? And then bringing up his son. Yeah. Yeah, that's the thing. So the central kind of thing at the end of this episode is Daniel wants all the alternate versions of the SG-1 team and the SGC to help him escape to his universe so he can save his universe. And his argument is all the versions of you in that universe are going to survive. And I feel like if I was in that situation, that argument is really not going to do a lot for me. Mm-hmm. Like yeah. I, I don't know. I think it'd it'd be nice if I mean, for me, if my death was imminent, it'd be nice to know that for sure that there's another version of me that that will go on. I mean, it's not me, but on the other hand, it, you know, it would make me feel a little bit better. I guess I just think that they're I'm sentimental that way. I guess mm-hmm. them thinking that Teal is going to buy that argument was, yeah. Well, it was. I mean, Jack knew he was. He was. A dead man. It was just you know buying Daniel some time right. mm-hmm. uh, to get out of there. But um, and then you know so Daniel is able to escape and deliver the coordinates for the Gould either homeworld or base. And um, this is paralleled like very nicely um, in the penultimate episode of Stargate Atlantis called Vegas, which is a very weird episode, mm. but it's it's kind of flipped on its head because that takes place on an alternate Earth. And, um, you know, there's an enemy on that ver- alternate version of Earth that's able to send a signal, and that alerts the enemies in the prime timeline uh, to come and attack Earth. So um, it's kind of the exact opposite, mm-hmm. and it's kind of nice how they, how they, you know, had that symmetry there. Mm-hmm. Is that the penult- penultimate episode of the entire series, or just the first season of Atlantis? Uh, the penultimate episode of the entire series, because I think they were going to get a sixth season and they didn't. And so they kind of wrapped the entire, they did kind of did one of those, like, you know, sixth season in one episode things. And it's, it feels very rushed, but we'll, yep. we'll get to that, of course. But, um, and it's not the first, uh, alternate reality that, mm-hmm. um, or parallel universe, mm-hmm. uh, um, that they have in Atlantis. Oh, nice. Yeah. Now, speaking of Star Wars earlier, I was I kind of struck by the, the when uh, the Jaffa were breaching the lower level SGC that looked exactly like the opening scene of Star Wars: A New Hope, where they're mm-hmm. co- yeah they're they're leaning down the Wait. corridor waiting for the Empire to blast open the door. It looked exactly like it. And Teal got to be Darth Vader. Yep, exactly. <laughs> oh yeah, he did. Yep. <laughs> he even had little. He even had Anakin's little uh, rope. Yeah, oh, yeah. air rope. Like his, yeah. Like his, uh his top knot thing he had going on. Yeah. It was very Egyptian looking. <laughs> yeah. We'll call back to that. But yeah, this really does, uh, I like the question of, they're just going to send nuclear weapons through the gates of these planets now, because what else are you going to do? And mm-hmm. Daniel's moral quandary with that, which I think is a legitimate question, but you also understand where General uh, O'Neill is coming from on that front. <laughs> Right. Well, it's, and we see that where early on where Daniel's talking about, oh yeah, you're talking about Chulak and where all the Jaffa are it's like, what's Chulak? You haven't been there? What's the address? He writes down the address and next thing you know, <laughs> there's a nuclear bomb going that way. Yeah. Oops. It does make you stop and think, why didn't they go to Chulak? And then you think, well, if Daniel didn't go on the first mission, the movie mission, right? Mm-hmm. He didn't stay behind. He didn't mm-hmm. marry Share. They didn't have to go back to save him yep. or to get him, I guess you say, you know, and, and so that, and then going to save Shari and Skara is what led them to Chulak. Mm-hmm. Right. But then it does make you wonder what happened on the original mission because O'Neill came home still serious. Yeah. He, they still, they still detonated the bomb, but where did they do it on a pot on Abydos? Did they do it in the ship the same way? Did they kill Ra the same way? You know, something tipped off the, the Gwaul that yes, earth is open for business and we need to, Mm-hmm. snuff this out right and that's kind of interesting like what have they been doing the last two years mm-hmm. yeah we don't get a lot of details we get bits and pieces like they've been to the same planet that uh or did they, did they go to the planet where the mirror was or did they just get the yes. yeah yes. They, yeah because mm-hmm. they went to but they didn't have the remote yeah that they went to explore the where the signal came from which was p3r233 mm-hmm. mm-hmm. I just like the way Daniel says, well, we've done a pretty good job making them mad or whatever, you know, 
Yeah. He just. <laughs> I'm sure they're coming for us next. Yeah, it's like, I think they're a little better yeah. at us, you know? <laughs> <I> kinda... <laughs> it's like a one-upsmanship, right? Yeah. yeah. And, and, he, and he does get in a very sick burn against Dr. Langford, too, when, when he can read the symbols. And he's like, oh, you didn't learn how to speak it on Abydos. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Oh, yeah, listening to the mm -hmm. spoken language version of it. <laughs> yep. <laughs> I, do, I think this is maybe the third or fourth time we've gotten a situation where this happened in the last episode where they were all the Android versions of themselves, mm -hmm. but they immediately get very, very angry at the people who are suspicious of who they are when you, you <laughs> think that they would understand that because if the roles were reversed, they would be in the exact same situation. Like if someone comes through the gate and you, right. they say they know you, or they seem to be someone, you know, you're not going to immediately trust them. So mm -hmm. I feel like going to like panic and anger is really not the best way to handle that kind of situation. <laughs> <laughs> so I love the way they they showed us Daniel coming back and being so super confused. Yeah. yeah. Right. I mean, everything kind of looks the same. Even the logo in the background mm -hmm. looks the same. Only it says SGA instead of SGC. Mm. Right. Their military yep. uniforms are a little different. The camo, yep. I think, was it the camo was different. The camo but, pattern is different. Yeah. Yeah, everything was similar. I mean, the same people are there. So I, I like the way they did that. And then Daniel's like thinking they're playing some weird mind game on him or mm -hmm. I don't know. There's something else. That was kind of fun. Yeah. We also get an abbreviated version of the Stargate uh, travel, which we have not, I've not, we've not seen that in a while. It's not quite as long as they had it in the first couple episodes mm -hmm. in the movie, but mm -hmm. they still brought some of that back. Oh yeah, yeah. We get we get a lot of Stargate rules in this episode mm -hmm. too, which is which is nice. We get our first mention of the thirty eight minute mm -hmm. um, wormhole uh, time limit, and then the whole protocol of like you have to be seventh Chevron unlocked, uh, otherwise they can dial in on you, which which uh, plays a factor in a number of episodes. As does that uh, thirty eight minute uh, time limit. Oh, nice. And the fact that the DHD can dial faster than the computers, mm -hmm. which. Yep. I think they eventually get better at. That was yeah, kind of nice. How, uh, Catherine was able to speed that up even in that time, like, by like 20 seconds or something, I think. Something like that, yeah. yeah. And that, that does come up in the Prime uh, universe, too. They do have that where they speed up the dialing sequence occasionally. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you wonder... Uh, I think you get some sort of randomized uh, address dialing going and see if they can at least get something to open on different planets. I don't know if that's something they ever confront, but that'd be an interesting concept to explore. They talk about that, I think, in one of the episodes we already watched about how, like, if they did do random dialing, it would have taken them, like, 20 years to <laughs> find, you know, this right. or that address mm -hmm. or something. Um, and that's why the cartouche on Abydos was so important. But if Daniel wasn't there to find it and decipher it, I mean, maybe Catherine did, or I don't know, because that cartouche is what unlocked the gate network. Yep. So, mm -hmm. and it's, I mean, you, you think of how many millions, if not billions, of combinations there are. You know, how, was there 30 symbols on the Stargate? I can't remember the exact yeah, number. Yeah, and, and then seven. Well, six, yeah. and then six, six yeah. coordinate numbers. So 30 times 30 times 30 times 30 times 30 <laughs> times 30, you know? Big number. Yeah. You, need, you need to be a tin man to figure that yeah. out quickly. <laughs> we had two references in this episode to the time period where they're not dialing in and they're trying to dial out they called it their window of opportunity mm -hmm. and i thought that was Ooh. really fun actually i think my husband pointed it out the first time but they said window of opportunity twice which is like the favorite episode of all time from season four <laughs> right nice so where they get stuck in basically a time loop Yep. And uh, but not everyone knows it. So it was kind of fun to, to I felt like they were like little snippets of future things in this episode. Mm. Nice. Like Groundhog Day in space. Yes, but only for certain people in the SGC. Yeah, that's, 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 a, that's a great episode. <laughs> Just skip ahead to that one, Jack. That, that's that's the one. If you've seen the, the YouTube clip about uh, Jack O'Neill's there playing golf or, yeah. you know, yeah. teeing yeah. off in in the middle of my backswing. Yeah, that's where that one comes from. <laughs> Be prepared for some teal groove patch in that one, though. So, oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Anyone else think it was weird at the, the 
the Star Wars reference there where they're, you know, lining up in the hallway that the highest ranking officer in the mountain was on the front line. Mm. Was, I guess, was that weird? I think at that point, his attitude was also, we're, we're doomed anyway, so might as well go out with a bang. Yeah. Just get in line. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, they blew up Air Force One. What is there even to, to live for at that point? <laughs> <laughs> I do like the Looks like most of Europe was gone too, right? Yeah. yeah, I noticed that too. The Gould really hates Spain. I mean, that had more <laughs> red dots than anything. I don't know what the producers have against Spain, but Gould were just knocking that place crazy. I do want to know why they had to move like east to west in a progressive fashion rather than just hitting every major population center first. It's like, do you really need to worry about the flyover states? No, I'm, I'm in. We're good, but... right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> they weren't quite as advanced as the Independence Day aliens, which just parked a, a ship over every city. Yeah. I think that's what they did in V also, right? Yeah. Parked yeah, them yeah. all at the same time over the big cities. Yep. Yeah. I do, uh, I do like we're getting more teases of the gold ship. They still have not shown it to us. Like all the oh. way. Yeah, they showed they, they showed the base of it. Yeah, they showed the base yeah. of it, but they didn't show the, the entire Hatak taxi. We've not yeah. been in one either, right? Nope. They actually isn't it in next episode? Two. Yeah. Oh, singularity. Yeah. No, because the I... next episode is politics, which I think is like our flashback episode. Oh, that's right. I forgot we had the flashback episode we got, in the middle. We got, we got to argue politics. <laughs> Yeah, next, next yeah. Week. that's right. We've got two episodes left of the season. I forgot. Yep. Yeah. Jack, can you just do our episode next week? Yeah. Just snip. Uh, it sounds like snippets of us talking about all the episodes. <laughs> new cuts of the uh, previous episodes. Yeah. yeah. Maybe we should this, do like favorite bloopers. Yeah. yeah. This this is a uh, definitely this next episode is going to show uh, the the time that this this series comes from when you know flashback episodes was actually a thing. Yeah, it wasn't a way to save money. Oh, yeah. So they could use yeah. the big budget and the next like combined budgets or something. Yeah. yeah. And without streaming, you had to catch the audience up before the big finale somehow. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So true. yeah, you're you're right, Lisa. It is two two weeks that we do get to see finally the inside of the the ships. So I did think it was nice the way they showed the ship here landing on top of Cheyenne Mountain. That was you know, cool. much like we saw in the in the first Pyramids. episode. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was lucky that the Cheyenne Mountain just happened to be that that size. Right, it fit. <laughs> <laughs> I drove almost to the top of Pikes Peak, but I don't like that. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They can land them for all I care. <laughs> <laughs> Did you have any other thoughts on this episode, Father Corey? Nothing here. Oh, actually, there was one. Uh, I got a kick out of the the back wall when when Daniel's poking around through the artifacts instead of you know like escaping the planet like he's supposed to be uh <laughs> behind the back walls a whole bunch of old pcbs you know for old computers yeah, and I stuff yeah <laughs> my husband yelled out are those scantrons what is that back there <laughs> motherboard yeah yep. advanced artifacts okay exactly <laughs> what about you lisa no no i think we covered it i again you you nailed it on the whole ship thing this was a a really good, you know, Jack Sam moment there. Almost, not quite. Yeah. Got to live through alternate universes for a little, you know, few more, lots of seasons. What about you, Victor? <laughs> um, I think I've covered everything already. Uh, I did really like uh, Daniel Jackson's line reading when he looks himself up in, in the computer and figures out and is his like, uh oh, I think I'm dead. You know, yeah. Yeah, that was a good, <laughs> that was a good line reading. <laughs> we would all do that, wouldn't we? Yeah. yeah, probably, yeah. <laughs> Before we go, we'd like to take a moment to thank our patrons who make it possible for us to create Secrets of Stargate, including Colin M, Ann S, GR, Peter G, and Daphne M. Their generous donations at sqpn.com slash give make it possible for us to continue the Secrets of Stargate and all the shows at StarQuest. You can join them by visiting sqpn.com slash give. Be sure to follow the show on Apple Podcasts, Google Play, Stitcher, TuneIn, Spotify, iHeartRadio, or on the SQPN YouTube channel. To find previous episodes of Secrets of Stargate and to send feedback, please visit sqpn.com slash Stargate. 
You can email us at stargate at sqpn.com or follow StarQuest on social media at facebook.com slash starquestmedia or on Twitter at sqpn. You can also join the StarQuest fan club mailing list by texting StarQuest to 66866. Send StarQuest to 66866. We'll be back next time when we'll be discussing the next episode of SG-1 Politics. Until then, Father Corey, thank you for joining me and sharing the secrets of Stargate. Thanks, Jack. Lisa Jones, thank you as well. Thanks, Jack. Victor Lambs, thank you too. Thanks, Jack, and beware the destroyers. <laughs> <laughs> Once again, I'm Jack Berezine. Thank you for listening to The Secrets of Stargate on Star Wars. Anyway, I'm sorry, but that just happens to be how I feel about it. What do you think? <laughs>